Good afternoon. We're going to get started with the reading of My Father's Bones <laughs> by Susan Schoen Harjo and Mary Catherine Nagel. Sack and Fox Nation. Jack stands in the northeast corner of the cemetery. He is surrounded by tombstones, each one displaying the name of a sibling, aunt, uncle, grandparent, or other relative. So here we are. This is it. These are the trees that surrounded him. Can you hear them? The birds? Those are the birds that sang to him. Oh yeah, in the sky. That big pink Oklahoma sky. And the red earth. My dad played in this dirt when he was a kid. This is my home. His home. We were born in this dirt. And when we die, we go back to this dirt. Or at least, that's what Dad wanted. Grandma and Grandpa, they're here now. Over here, that's my auntie. My dad's brother, my uncle, some of my cousins. Dad's twin died when he was nine. He's buried right here. We're all here, except dad. They took him. Far away from here to bury him. Some place they named the borough of Pennsylvania, a place he'd never even seen. My dad, you may know him, or maybe you think you know him. Sure, he was famous, and yeah, he won some gold medals at the Olympics, but that didn't change who he was. To my dad, he was always Sackenbox, Thunder Clan of the Sackenbox Nation. That's one thing you should know about us Indians. We're no different than white people or any other kind of folks for that matter. We want to bury our loved ones with our loved ones, with our mothers, our fathers, and our brothers. I spent years trying to bring dad back. I begged. I pleaded. I prayed. And when that didn't work, I did what you non-natives do all the time. I filed a lawsuit. Steve Ward and Bill Enter, Tulsa, Oklahoma, February 2015. We lost. How is that possible? Appellate court says Judge Caputo got it wrong that the, that the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA, doesn't apply. Because Dad wasn't Native American? No. They said the borough isn't actually holding his remains? No. They said the borough doesn't even receive federal funds? No. Well, what did they say? They said that applying the plain text of the statute here would lead to a result that Congress never intended. They think Congress didn't intend for us to win. Right. Under the statute, we win, but they applied the absurdity doctrine. What is the absurdity doctrine? It's a doctrine that courts apply when they don't like the result of applying the plain language of a statute. They call that a doctrine? I agree. It's absurd. I'll tell you what's absurd. A white woman can walk in, in, interrupt a native burial ceremony, take my father's body, and sell it, and a court will conclude that NAGPRA doesn't apply because to allow my father to be buried with his relatives on Sack and Fox soil is absurd. I know you're upset. We have to appeal. After the argument in the Third Circuit, you said if we lose here, 
We have the option of appealing to the Supreme Court. We do. But do you think we should? Indians lose about 98% of the cases they bring to the Supreme Court. Then why do we keep bringing them? Because there's no other choice. I told my brother I'd never give up. Okay, I'm just telling you, Indians don't have a good track record in front of the court. Dad always said he never saw a record he couldn't break. My father's name was Pateshka. Or as you would say in English, the bright path the lightning makes as it goes across the sky. He was the most incredible athlete of the 20th century. Most remember him as Jim Thorpe. And for the gold medals he won in the 1912 Olympics. He won both the decathlon and the pentathlon, a feat no one's ever duplicated. His scores in the combined 15 events were off the charts. He set records that took decades to break. What do you remember my dad for? The medals he won? The records he broke? Or the town that changed his name to his? Me? I just remember him as dad. Because that's who he was to me. Michael Sofranco and Secretary enter the mayor's office in borough of Jim Thorpe, February 2015. We won! Feels good, doesn't it? You didn't think we'd win. I, I wasn't sure. But we signed a contract. Yeah, well, I'm not a lawyer. I'm just a common citizen. And as a common citizen, I always thought a contract was a contract, no matter how you slice it. But apparently, in some instances, it's not. You aren't a common citizen. You're our mayor. I'm just glad we won. Glad we got that district court overturned. You know, I voted for you twice. Thank you. And I think you're doing an amazing job. I don't know how you do it. I get out of bed every morning. That's the first step. So if we won, that means no more depositions, no more late night brief reading, no more long conference calls. It's over. <laughs> this is the American legal system. It's never over. You just said we won the appeal. In the Third Circuit. They could appeal to the Supreme Court. My grandpa always talked about before when this was mock chunk. I wasn't alive then, but he was. And I remembered, bef and he remembered before we were named Jim Thorpe, back when we had coal mines. But by the time my dad was old enough to work, the mines were all shut down, not a single one left open. So daddy always said, Jim Thorpe's all we have. We don't have mines anymore, and we don't have the ridge above the river where folks used to come and hike, because they mined it away. So all we got in this town is a dead Indian. He's buried here. We're honoring him. They can't ever take that away from us. We won't let them. Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act. It's a little thing Congress put together and passed in 1990 for our civil rights, Native American human rights. When Congress found out about a serious problem in America. For some reason, a lot of non-native folks think they should be able to buy and sell our remains and the remains of our ancestors, our hair, bones, and skulls. Scientists were digging up our heads to study them. Some were collecting our bones for trophies. Others were using them as tourist attractions. But we're human. We're people. And just like any other folks, we have the inalienable right to be buried in the same soil as our relatives and to have our ashes sent to the many directions from places of our choosing. NACPRA recognized that we have that right. And then this court in Pennsylvania denied us that human right. Have you ever had your deposition taken? I think it would be fun. 
Michael Sofranco enters and moves to the table with chairs. Steve Ward sits across from him. October 23, 2012, Lehighton, Pennsylvania. The court reporter sits, typing every word that's spoken. Mr. Sofranco, would you please state your name for the record? Michael J. Sofranco. Mr. Sofranco, do you hold a public office with the defendant, the borough of Jim Thorpe? Yes, I am currently the elected mayor. Are you a resident of the borough of Jim Thorpe? Yes, lifelong resident. Mr. Sofranco, why was Jim Thorpe buried in the borough? I think I would tell you that my understanding would be, from what history tells me, they were looking for a place to honor the athlete, to honor the many accomplishments of Jim Thorpe. Patricia Thorpe had been looking for that in a place that would rightfully honor her husband. So just to be clear, you never met with her, Patricia Thorpe? <laughs> no. Joseph Boyle, along with the members of the committee, would have sat down and met with her and said, you know, we would like to honor him and show truly what he deserves for his accomplishments. And this is the reason Jim Thorpe would have been buried there. That would have been the overwhelming reason to why he was there. Were there other reasons? Obviously, the two towns coming together and to have one, you'd find it, one unified name would be a second reason because there were reasons the two boroughs needed to come together. And, you know, were we going to be East Mock Chunk, Upper Mock Chunk, West Mock Chunk, whatever chunk? That all would have been an issue. I wanted to interrupt. So by having one common name for the entire borough would have been a second reason. But of course I didn't. Getting that together would have been... That all would have been the reason, yes. One final question. I wanted to ask. Do you have proof of the contract you claim to have signed? Why won't you let my dad come home? There was a contract. But then again, you're asking me if I have any proof of that or any documentation on that. And I can't show you that. If I could take you back to 1954, I'm, I'm sure I could take you to a coffee shop. I'm sure I could take you to a breakfast area and say, hey, they sat down at a kitchen table or a dining room table or they sat down in a diner and discussed, hey, what are we going to do about this? But as far as the official borough documentation that I could show this was being discussed at the time, no. I have nothing that I as the mayor right now can show you. But Patricia Thorpe showed up. And they signed a contract. Thank you. That concludes my questioning. It's 3.36 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, October 23rd, 2012. We're off the record. Michael Sofranco exits. July 16th, 2012, Tulsa, Oklahoma. What if I don't know what to say? Just answer his questions and listen for my objections. I'm nervous. You'll do fine. Can we cancel? You have to testify. Why me? This is your lawsuit. This is Jack's lawsuit. He filed it. And you joined it. Because he asked me to. Depositions are very intimidating, I know. I'm not intimidated. Remember what we discussed. If you don't know the answer to a question, you say, I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know what to say to convince these people to let us bring Dad home. If I knew, I would have said it by now. I would have said it years ago. I remember when Jack ran for principal chief. I looked at him and I knew he had a plan. He was going to bring dad home. But now Jack's down there and I'm up here. And if I don't say the right thing, they won't let dad come home. Kind of makes me want to say nothing at all. William Schwab enters and sits on the other side of the table. The court reporter types every word that's spoken. Bill takes his seat at the table. Mr. Thorpe, my name is Bill Schwab. I'm the attorney for the borough of Jim Thorpe. I'll be asking you a few questions today. Now, you've you filed a complaint in the matter in which you've made an allegation that your, do, your father died in 1953, that his remains were shopped to several cities. My brother filed the complaint. Right. And he's passed now. I realize this. I'm just trying to understand, when your brother filed the complaint, what did he mean when he wrote that your father's remains were shopped to several cities? Objection. Complaint speaks for itself. He filed it. I'm entitled to ask him about it. You can answer the question. What was the question? How is it that you claim that your father's remains were shopped to several cities? To my knowledge, Patsy 
his third wife, she came in and removed his body from a ceremony, our Indian burial ceremony that was taking place with the Sac and Fox tribe. They came in with a hearse and a sheriff or state patrol and took his body during our farewell dinner. Were you present? Yes, I was present. And how old were you at the time? At that time, I probably, let's see, coming out of service, probably 25, 26 years old. Now, your father passed unexpectedly in 1953? Yes. Did you ever, ever have a conversation with your father about his burial or his burial plans? As far as dad was concerned, at different occasions throughout our lifetimes, uh, yeah, he had mentioned that he wanted to be put in rest in Oklahoma in the, in the tribal grounds. Did your dad have a will when he passed? To my knowledge, uh, no. An estate was raised for him, though. Pardon? An estate was raised for him? I'm not... Uh, you don't know? No. I had come back from Korea at the time he passed, so I don't know what went on in California. Were you aware that uh, Patsy entered into a contract with the borough of Mokchunk in East Mokchunk on May 19, 1954? Objection. Calls for a legal conclusion. You can answer. I understood they had something, but I, of course, uh, I wasn't there to know all the points of it. Have you ever seen the contract? No. Were you aware that the two boroughs would, under the contract, have to merge and consolidate themselves under the name of Jim Thorpe? That's what I heard. Were you aware that the obligation would be binding on the heirs, administrators, and executors for so long as the boroughs of East Mokchunk and Mokchunk, parties here on two, are officially known or designated as Jim Thorpe? Okay. Now we're talking about heirs. Who put the heirs in there? We're the heirs, but we weren't aware of this. That was my question. Were you aware of this? No. Now, on paragraph 21 of your complaint, you've alleged that NAGPRA was a legal tool to prevent the exploitation and commercialization of remains of their ancestors and elders. Uh huh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that a yes? Yes. Do you believe that the borough of Jim Thorpe is doing that today? Yes. Borough of Jim Thorpe. How are they doing that? I would say commercially. They're using my dad's remains to bring people to their town to visit. Also commercially, I understand that they've named a lot of facilities in the town under his name, like, uh, I guess they got laundries and different things like that, Jim Thorpe or whatever. I really don't know, you know, which ones, but I've heard they're, they've got a number of places that use his name. So the borough of Jim Thorpe, by having businesses named after the borough, they're exploiting your father's name? Commercially. I mean, they're drawing money from the name. Uh-huh. And you live in Arlington, Texas? Yes. Okay, is there an Arlington laundromat? I don't know. Is there an Arlington beer distributor? What about an Arlington library? Objection. You've made your point. Why don't you ask a question with some relevance to the issues in the case? <sighs> now, my understanding is that, and, and please correct me, because Pennsylvania is not rich with Indian heritage. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that. We're rich with Indian heritage. But sure. not with... <laughs> sorry. Sure. But not with Indians and in that we get familiar with their practices. Okay. My understanding is once an Indian is buried in sanctified land that's now sacred, then his soul is at rest. Is that your understanding? I really don't think so. I mean, I mean his burial should have been completed at the Sac and Fox ceremony, but it was interrupted. So his first ceremony was never completed? Never completed. But your half-sister Grace completed one in Pennsylvania? That wasn't a Sac and Fox completion. What you did was a ceremony from a, da a different tribe. That's not who Dad was. So the Sac and Fox burial by your half-sister Grace in Pennsylvania... That wasn't a Sac and Fox burial! Okay. If someone was to show you that it was a Sac and Fox burial, would your opinion be different as to its legitimacy? No. We don't need you to show us what is and is not Sac and Fox. I know what Sac and Fox is. And you aren't Sac and Fox. Before my father's passing, no one had ever interrupted a Sac and Fox burial. 
So when Patsy walked in there and took his body, we didn't know what to do. We just sat there in shock. I remember I had my brother Bill next to me and my relative Henrietta, she was on my right. And suddenly out of nowhere, this white guy burst in. Henrietta gasped, Bill grabbed my hand. We knew something was wrong. The white guy, he came in the wrong door. The door he came through, that was the door for death. Only the dead come in and out of that door. William Schwab, Steve Ward, and Court Reporter Exit. January 2011. Hey, bud. Remember when Dad used to take us out back and play football? Yeah, just about every Saturday. Yeah, even in the rain. He always passed to you. He passed to you, too. Yeah, but he always passed to you first. I was the youngest. Yeah, it's because he always looked out for the, the baby. He was the strongest man on the face of the earth. But if he saw someone weaker than him, he always stopped to help them. I sure am glad you brought this suit. I want you to be named plaintiff. What? Like instead of you? Instead of me. I don't know anything about NAGPRA. You don't need to. We have a lawyer, a very good one. But you're doing such a good job. I'm dying, brother. Don't say that. Cancer. Your doctor said... Month. Maybe two. Someone has to bring Dad home. We'll bury him next to you. Mayor enters office. Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, 1986. <clears throat> You must be Jack. Principal Chief Thorpe. Principal Chief? Of the Sac and Fox Nation. I'm here to collect my father. I don't think that's possible. Your father's been with us for 30 years now. It's time for him to come home. I know you have strong feelings about this. You have my dad. We signed a contract. He never signed anything. His wife did, and we lived up to our end of the bargain. He wanted to be buried in Oklahoma. That's about as American as you can get. He wanted to be buried with his family. Thanks to us, Americans know more about your dad than they ever did before. They drive through our sleepy little town just to see his grave, and there they can read about his achievements. This isn't his home. It is now. You're standing in Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania. We named it after him. He has his own zip code. Watheshkuk. His name is Watheshkuk. What? May 19th, 1954. East Mock Chunk, Pennsylvania. Mayor and Patricia Thorpe sit in a local diner sipping on two cups of coffee. How's your coffee? Fine. We don't have much in this sleepy little town, but this diner, it's something we're proud of. Lukewarm, really. Tastes like it was brewed yesterday. Uh, oh, well, we can't have that. It's, Matt! It's okay. No, it's, it's not. It's fine. Yes? Get our guest some coffee, real coffee, not your leftover pot of coffee. Uh, yes, sir. He's new. I'm sure he hates his job. Well, I'm sure he loves it. This diner's one of the best places in town. A lot of guys wish they could get a job here. At a diner? Look around you. There's nothing else here. The mines closed, all of them, five years ago, and they employed our entire town. Without them, well, let's just say everyone around here is looking for a job. Matt's lucky he found one. Matt returns with a cup of coffee. He hands it to Patricia. Patricia looks at Matt. She sips. He exits. I have the contract here ready to sign. How much are you going to give me? You want compensation? I'm giving you his body. Yes, but we agreed to change our name. We're renaming our town Borough of Jim Thorpe. My husband's famous. Yes, I'm aware of his medals. So when you have your town named after him, you're going to make money. 
I think it's only fair that I get a piece of that money. Just a piece. Matt returns to the table with their breakfast dishes. He places the dishes on the table. I ordered eggs. Yes. I didn't say scrambled eggs. Oh. If I wanted my eggs scrambled, I would have said so. How would you like your eggs? The way I ordered them. Okay. Take these back to the kitchen. I'm sorry, I thought you said scrambled. I didn't. Well, we would be more than happy to compensate you for your husband's body, but we need you to agree that this agreement is binding. I said I'd sign. Yes, What more do you want? You must agree that this contract is binding not just on you, but on all of his heirs. Heirs? His children and their children and their children's children. We added one short paragraph. Mayor hands Patricia the contract to read. The first party agrees for herself, her heirs, administrators, and executors that neither she nor any of them will remove or cause to be removed the body of her said husband, Jim Thorpe, from the confines of the boroughs of East Mock Chunk and Mock Chunk. What do you think? Fine by me. Great. <laughs> when do I get my money? When do you need it? Now. Matt returns with a plate of eggs served sunny side up. He places the plate in front of Patricia. What's this? Your eggs. I said poached. Poached eggs. Not scrambled, not sunny side up. I'm so sorry. I can't eat this. Please get her some poached eggs. Yes, sir. I'm really sorry about this. When do you want the body? Oh, well, maybe in a month or two. We'll need to build the mausoleum. I'd like to leave it with you today, if that's okay. You brought it with you? I'm done driving it around. Uh, Okay, I'll call the morgue. I'm sure we can find some space. The biggest mistake I made in my life was marrying an Indian. My mother warned me. She said, Patsy, don't marry that man. Once a redskin, always a redskin, even when he's famous. But I was stupid. I thought... It would be glamorous. I thought we'd eat oysters and drink wine and watch the sunset on the beach. But I never got to enjoy any of that. No, that son of a bitch never made me a dime. I'd tell him, you're famous, Jim. People love you. You have fans, millions of them. You've won gold medals, for Christ's sake. Go put your face on a billboard. Uh, Sell some soap or cars or beer. We could have been millionaires. But did he care about making money? No. That's not important to me, Patsy, he used to say. Sure, not important to him, but what about me? I deserve this. He's not going to leave this world without giving something to me. Matt returns carrying a plate of poached eggs. He sets the plate down in front of Patricia. Patricia looks at the eggs. She looks at Matt. She smiles. Thank you. Mayor places the contract in front of her and hands her a pen. Patsy smiles. Sack and Fox songs fill the air along with the sound of drumming. Jesus, I came on more who may nay. Jesus, I came on more who may nay. Nia, no, hey, nay. Jesus, I came on more who may nay. Sack and Fox burial ceremony lasts four days. The fourth day is important. That's when the elders hold the name return ceremony. We have two spirits. We have our big spirit and we have our little spirit. And when you pass, an elder gives your little spirit a name. A name that says to your little spirit, it's okay, you can go on now. 1953, Sack and Fox Nation, Jim Thorpe's funeral. Jack, now 16 years old, and Bill, now 25, sing a Sack and Fox prayer song. Highway patrolman enters, followed by Patricia Thorpe. They interrupt the ceremony. What are you doing? He's cold, too cold. We're in the middle of a... Put him in the hearse. Now? Yes. I think they're praying. I said put him in the damn hearse so we can get the hell out of here. I don't have time for this Indian nonsense. Highway patrolman exits, rolling the coffin in front of him. Patricia follows him out. Is she going to bring him back? 
We didn't finish this ceremony. We will. Someday, we will finish his ceremony. Return to the present day. The cemetery where everything began. Sac and Fox Nation. Bill enters. He carries some prayer tobacco and goes in front of Jack's grave. Some prayer for prayer tobacco for you, brother. I guess you know by now we lost in the appeals court. I don't know what went wrong. I really thought for a minute there we were going to bring Dad home. I'm sorry, Jack. You're here. Dad's still in Pennsylvania. This isn't the way things were supposed to be. You weren't supposed to be here before Dad. We're going to appeal to the Supreme Court. I'll never give up. I promise. Someday, we'll bring Dad back. Someday, we'll, we'll finish, finish his, his ceremony. ceremony. The end.